Increasing global demand for energy and commodities drives the oil, gas, and mining industries. Major innovations in these global industries are the domain of a select few. They include the Dutch dredging and marine expert, Royal Voskalis Westminster. Voskalis is a leading global dredging and marine expert. With safety as a core value, the company delivers innovative, sustainable, and all-in solutions for clients. Projects in remote locations with a strong environmental focus are a speciality. But now, Boscalis is facing a new and challenging project. What seems like an almost impossible mission. How to get this huge dredging vessel to this lake on board of this transport ship, crossing thousands of miles of ocean and rivers and this landscape in these conditions to its final destination, a bauxite mine in the heart of the jungle of Suriname. Suralco, an indirect joint subsidiary of Alcoa and Alumina Limited, awarded Boscalis a contract for mining bauxite in Lelydorp near Paramaribo. The project will run from early 2012 to early 2015. Bauxite is a valuable raw material from which aluminum is produced. The bauxite is located deep in this swamp area under a thick layer of soft and stiff clay. This is a delicate mining challenge. Efficiency is vital, time is of the essence, and safety is priority number one. Boscala sees the Lelydorp job as a total mining project. The clay on top of the bauxite has to be removed before the ore can be excavated and taken to the Soralco factory nearby. There is approximately 20 million cubed meters of this overburdened material. Once the dredging work has been done, the mine pit will be pumped dry, allowing the dry earth moving equipment to remove the remaining clay on top of the bauxite. Finally, about 3.8 million tons of bauxite will be ready for mining. The key tool is a cutter suction dredger, the Orion, a specialized high production vessel with the capacity to expose the precious raw material. The Orion will be accompanied by two smaller supporting vessels, the Booster Station Energy 3 and the Multicat Argus 1. But before the Orion reaches Suriname, a long ocean voyage waits. In Abu Dhabi, the Orion waits to be shipped on board of this giant vessel, the Roll Dock C, a multifunctional transporter for heavy cargo that could manage semi-submersible operations. It can be loaded using a unique combination of float in and roll off. A water depth of 10 meters is needed to load the Orion. Once in position, the Orion is lowered onto cargo cribbing supports. The ballast tanks could now be emptied to refloat the Roll Dock C which now embraces its cargo above the water. The Argus and the Orion are now fastened into place, ready for the voyage to Suriname. Paramaribo, the capital of the Republic of Suriname in the northeast of South America. Suriname covers 164,000 square kilometers. It ranks as the 17th richest country in the world, thanks to its natural resources and precious raw material like gold, oil, and bauxite. After 30 days on the ocean, the Roll Dock Sea and its cargo reach their destination. Moving up the wide Suriname River, the Roll Dock sails inland to the final destination at the Seralco Dock where large ships line up to load their cargoes of alumina, which has been processed from bauxite at the refinery. A landing platform was built specially to unload the Orion. Two steel towers measuring eight meters by eight, 25 meters apart, with a recessed U-shaped platform between them. The Roll Dock Sea needs the full width of the river to move astern into its new dock. anchor wires pull the vessel into place between the two steel towers. Once the roll dock sea is secured between the towers, 
Its ballast tanks are emptied, so the tailgate is level with the land. For the next stage of this giant operation, Boscalis called in a global specialist, Mammut, a worldwide leading tailor-made transporting and heavy lifting specialist with its main office in the Netherlands. Before the Orion can be rolled off, the support vessel Energy 3 and the Argus need to move out. reaches the shore. Now, the second stage of the mobilization starts, the most challenging part of the whole operation. On two sets of multi-wheeled platform trailers, together with 76 axle lines and 608 tires, the Orion will face numerous obstacles on her road to the final destination, 12 kilometers away. The Boscalis team is ready. The team has a detailed mobilization schedule to eliminate any surprises. A survey team has made maps of the entire area. 500 hectares of roads, swamps, lakes, and jungle. New roads have been built, and every bend on the transport route subjected to intense scrutiny and calculations. Some sections of the road have been covered with 20 millimeter steel plates, 12 meters long. The Orion lumbers along the roads smoothly. But now for the first major obstacle, two electricity cables, both vital for the power supply in large sections of Paramaribo. The Orion is 15 meters high and she can't slip underneath. So the first electricity cable needs to be lifted using telescopic cranes before the ship can get past. Engineers from the electricity company work against the clock. Now, the Orion is ready to cross the main road. The local people turn out to watch. There is an unexpected delay disconnecting the power cables from the second pylon. The workers are having problems with the thick cables. Traffic cues pile up and the crowd is getting excited. Finally, after two hours, the last power cable is cut the convoy gets back on the move. The team's worst nightmare comes true. Tropical rains lash down non-stop. The road surface turns muddy and slippery. The trailers beneath a huge vessel struggle to maintain traction. Extra steel plates are needed to keep the convoy on the road and on the move. Even on the worsening road, the operation can't stop. The clock is ticking. Any more delays will be a disaster. It's still a long way to go. The next obstacle is already looming ahead, and everything still has to be done in the safest possible way. Four and a half kilometers later, a new big challenge. The Para Bridge. An extremely narrow bridge requiring absolute precision. But the team has no worries. Detailed engineering investigations before the operation and heavy-duty reinforcements for the bridge mean it's now strong enough to take the 2,100-ton load of the Orion and its trailers. The bridge requires extra strengthening to handle the load. Five additional support beams measuring 22 meters each are placed alongside the existing piles. 
the moment arrives. Buscalis, Mahmoud, MNO Vervat, and the engineering team meet for a last brief discussion of safety measures and critical factors. Game on. Slowly, the Orion comes alive. 1,600 horsepower pushes the train forward. The men are tense, but alert. The team breathes a sigh of relief. The Orion has made it. So far, so good, but there's still no time to celebrate. The next challenge looms, a low bridge. A special bypass is needed so the Orion can move around it. It will take all the power of the trailers and an incredible number of steel plates to get the Orion up and down the slippery and muddy ramp. In a complex project like the Orion mobilization, safety and protection are top priority. Strict rules are needed when hundreds of people go to working in a potentially dangerous environment. At Boscalis, safety is a core value, which is why the company has its NINA policy. No injuries, no accidents. PPE is mandatory. Everybody wears steel toe rigging boots, hard hats, high-vis jackets, no injuries, no accidents. After 9.9 .9 kilometers, the Orion is entering the final stage of its grueling journey. In heavy rain and harsh temperatures. But now, the most challenging part of the entire operation has arrived. The Orion has to move to the mine ramp to reach its final destination. Launching the Orion and its supporting vessels into the Lelydorp Lake is an unusual and complex operation. A launch pit has to be built. A range of geotechnical tests and measurements take place to provide a stable drive path. The dredging giant will be placed on blocks 1.5 meters tall. Then. The Mammut trailers will be carefully taken out from under before water is pumped into the launch pit, returning it to its original level of 3.5 NSP. The vessels are ready to float. Pessimistic weather forecasts for the days ahead hang like dark clouds over the entire operation. More delays threaten. The subsoil of the downward slope has been exposed to heavy rainfall, turning the dock into a risky slide all available plates will be needed to keep a grip. Now, the expertise of both Boscalis and Mahmoud is tested to the full. Some delicate maneuvering is needed to move the Orion into a straight line with the dock slope. Disaster strikes. One of the axles breaks. The steel plates cut like knives into the tires and make them explode. Other tires disappear into deep holes of mud. Both teams step on the brake and get together for a brief meeting. This is a critical decision. Should they bring the Orion back to her original position on the haul road or move forward? More rain clouds appear above the lake. Moving back could delay everything for days before weather conditions allow a new attempt. Or 
after they move on with two tires and one axle less. The teams are experienced professionals. They conduct a safety hazard analysis. The calculated safety margin means the Orion is ready to move again. Three hours later, the dredger has been lowered to its final destination in the launching pit. The Orion, the Argus, and the Energy 3 are now ready for their mission over the next 80 weeks. For Voscalis, the successful mobilization of the Orion is a major step forward in this innovative total mining project. Once again, Boscalis has made the impossible possible.